Hello, friends. I'm so glad you could be with me today as we're in God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word ministry, working our way verse by verse through the things that God has chosen to reveal. We're in the book of Daniel, and now in chapter 8 of Daniel. Chapter 8 of Daniel is the vision given to Daniel of two great kingdoms that will be impacting on the Jewish people in the period of time prior to the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, his birth at Bethlehem. I'm going to pick up our reading today in verse 9. Out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the glorious land, and it grew great. And then jumping ahead, I want to go to verse 17. And so he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was frightened, and I fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, O son of man, that this vision is for the time of the end. We've been working our way in this part of the book of Daniel through some prophecies. Chapter 7's prophecy about the flow of human history, repeating and giving more detail to the picture of the flow of human history that we saw in chapter 2, all pointing toward the return of the Messiah and the implementation of God's kingdom in this world. Now in chapter 8, happening a couple of years past the previous decision, God is giving a clearer picture to Daniel and to us of what was lying ahead in terms of impacts on his people, the Jews. He's, talking to, he's alerting us to two kingdoms that will be particularly important on the Jewish people. The first of those kingdoms we looked at, which was the Ram Kingdom which, of course, referred to the Medo-Persians, the ones who granted the return from exile, and the ones who maintained oversight of the Holy Land for a period of time, two centuries, in fact. The second kingdom, which we began to look at, was the Goat Kingdom, that kingdom of Alexander the Great, the Greek kingdom. We talked more about the nature of that kingdom, and then yesterday we were talking about the fact of how at the death of Alexander, and as this particular prophecy tells us, that kingdom broke into four kingdoms. It was still the goat kingdom, but no longer was there one single head over it like Alexander. Instead, it broke into four kingdoms, uh, each one headed by one of the core generals in Alexander's army. The focus from that point onward in the dream, in this vision that was being given to Daniel, is on the little horn, as it's described here, that emerges on one of the four horns that took the place of the big horn. <laughs> After Alexander the big horn dies, four smaller kingdoms make up it, and then out of one of those comes a little horn. And this little horn, I said yesterday, is a reference to a ruler that emerged in the Seleucid Empire, I said this particular ruler was Antiochus Epiphanes. So we're going to continue on in that study today and try to get a better grasp of why God was revealing this to the Jews and to us about this coming little horn. Now, before I go further with that, however, I want to talk about verse 17 that I read to you, where the angel says to Daniel, listen, O son of man, the vision is for the end of time. What is meant here by the end of time? Well, I'm wanting to draw your attention to that because that phrase in this particular case is not referring to what it was referring to in chapter 7 or chapter 2, where in that case it was talking about the end of Gentile history in that period of time preceding the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the implementation of God's kingdom. No, in this particular case, because the time frame that's being described in the vision is that period of time prior to the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the end, time of the end, is referring to the time of the end of Jewish identity and nationhood. Following the time of the goat, as we've seen in the other prophecies, Rome comes on the scene, takes over control of the Holy Land, and in 70 AD destroys the Jewish nation, casts it off in dispersion, and the nation ceased to exist until our more recent history 
as Israel reemerges in 1948. At any rate, the end times that are being described here in this eighth chapter refer to that ending of Jewish independence. Just to make it clear to you, and sometimes we look at certain terms being used and we think they're used the same way in every situation, and they're not. Context helps us to understand what is meant by a term. So in this case, the time of the end is the end of Jewish independence. Well, at any rate, getting back to our unfolding vision that was given to Daniel, the empire of the goat emerges into a four, split up a four empire structure, and out of one of those emerges this little horn. As I told you before, this little horn of chapter 8 is not the little horn of chapter 7. The little horn of chapter 7 occurs during the time of the end after the reemergence of the Roman Empire and leading toward the time of the tribulation. Now, that's not what's being talked about here. Instead, this is clearly under the period of time of the Greek empires. And the little horn comes near the end of that era. Because Rome was coming on the scene, by the way, at the time that Antiochus Epiphanes was there, and would eventually conquer all of these regions that had been under the Greek Empire. At any rate, the little horn emerges. He rises to power within the Seleucid Empire, one of the four, and that empire was initially centered in Babylon and Persia regions. It later pushed toward Palestine, which was under the Ptolemaic Empire of the Greeks, and eventually ended up controlling Palestine, pushing toward the glorious land, as the way the description is in, uh, in, chapter, in verse 9 of chapter 8. Well, this little horn, as I've mentioned a number of times, is clearly Antiochus Epiphanes. Most conservative scholars see that as a perfect fit, for what's being described here about this particular little horn. Antiochus Epiphanes ruled the Seleucid Empire from 175 BC to 164 BC. His time of rule paralleled the time of the Maccabeans. What do I mean by the Maccabeans? Well, during this period of time in Jewish history, and you see reference to it in what's called the Apocrypha, not the Bible, but some extra biblical books that talk about Jewish history and some Jewish ideas. The Jews never saw them as canon of Scripture. I don't see them as canon of Scripture. But first and second Maccabees and so forth talk about that period of time, a time in which some Jewish independence was gained. This was the period. During the time of the Maccabees, the Jewish Freedom fighters were fighting against the Seleucid Empire in the bloodthirsty, violent control that uh, Antiochus Epiphany carried out over the Jewish homeland. This was a serious, serious time, and there had been no other uh, emperor, no other ruler who was as bloodthirsty and, and as cruel toward the Jews as Antiochus Epiphanes had been. That's why, by the way, he is a type of the eventual Antichrist at the end of Gentile history, who particularly attacks the Jews and all of the people of God. Well, anyway, this is Antiochus Epiphanes. He was eventually defeated, pushed out of Jerusalem, a time of great victory for the Jews. And by the way, lest you think I'm being exaggerating on this point, the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah is celebrated to celebrate the defeat of Antiochus Epiphanes in the regaining of the temple in uh, Jewish history. And uh, we'll talk more about that, Lord willing, tomorrow. At any rate, the little horn is Antiochus Epiphanes. Why was he so central in this picture of influence over the Jewish people? And it's primarily for this reason. Antiochus Epiphanes saw his call in life to replace all of the lesser cultures with the Greek culture. Remember, all of these four kingdoms were really Greek kingdoms. He wanted to replace all of them and make the Greek culture the universal culture. 
Obviously, as he tried to do that, there was resistance at various places. The strongest resistance to that acculturation was found within the glorious land, Palestine, Judea. It was a stubborn resistance to it because the Jews felt their culture was a biblical culture. They were not going to give it up to adopt a Greek culture. And long story short, one of the consequences of that uh, resistance was increased persecution coming against the Jews and eventually led to bloodshed and brutalization of the Jewish people. It is this Antioch Epiphanes that we're talking about here, and God was alerting the Jews as one who would come yet on their lives. Well, join me tomorrow as we look at some more details that the Scripture gives us about this little horn who was to come and so greatly impact on the Jewish people. God bless.